So professors at Kinson and Schifrin, can you summarize and elaborate slightly on what the video told us about your model of memory? Firstly, information enters the sensory memory and will last for approximately 200 to 500 milliseconds before it fades away. Then if attention is paid, information will be transferred to the short-term memory. Using Miller's research Richard and I concluded that STM has a limited capacity of 7 plus slash 2 and is different to long-term memory which has an unlimited capacity. Peterson and Peterson provided us with evidence that short-term memory was also different to long-term memory in relation to duration with a duration of 18 to 30 seconds. Whereas, Barak et al. High School Yearbook study showed us that long-term memories can last a very long time. Information is then transferred to the long-term memory through rehearsal. Without this, information is simply forgotten. Thank you professors. Can you tell us how is information stored in short-term memory and long-term memory? Badly in 1966 found that short-term memories are stored acoustically and long-term memories are stored semantically. Case studies by Shalice and Warringtons, 1972 of brain-damaged patients provided us with further support that STM and LTM are separate and distinct stores. In one case a patient with damage to STM could still recall information from LTM. In another case findings showed that a patient with damage to LTM was able to form new short-term memories but was unable to transfer them to LTM. So using a whole range of findings from various research methods you created your famous theory, one of the first to outline the structure and processes of memory. Yes, we are very proud of the major influence our theory has had on our understanding of information processing. Thank you gentlemen, if you have any further question don't hesitate to send a direct message to Mr. Redshaw or Megan on this website.